to make sure that Aggie stays in Kansas. <laughs> so, uh, any bill introductions? Okay. Uh, we're going to hear the uh, Department of Ag budget today. Uh, Luke, do you have some information for us? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, good morning. My name is Luke Drury. I am a fiscal analyst with the Kansas Legislative Research Department. And I will be going over today the Department of Agriculture's budget. In front of you, you do have um, the budget draft. Uh, I would like to, on this first page here, you have an overview of the agency. Uh, overall numbers, small blurb there about what it is that they do along with an executive summary. However, I would like to begin on page uh, number four, please. Down at the bottom is a look at their state general fund uh, expenditures 2015 through 2024. For the Kansas Department of Agriculture, SGF actual expenditures averaged about nine and a half million from 15 to 22. The FY23 revised estimate for SGF expenditures totals 11.2 million and includes agency supplemental requests of 150,000 for the <laughs> agriculture laboratory. Tried to combine the two words there. Program. Uh, FY24 requested SGF expenditures is 12.7, and that includes agency enhancement requests of 1.6 million. If you turn on over to page five, we'll begin with the 2023 analysis. So, at the top of the page is the amount approved by the 2022 legislature. That's where we start. And then we just a second. Everybody got page five? Okay. Hey, go ahead. Sorry. Certainly. So we start with the 2023 analysis uh, up at the top is the legislative approved number. We start with that, identify any changes that have happened, um, and then through either legislative approved or um, the agency's request. So uh, two adjustments were made to the $55.8 million that were appropriated to the Department of Agriculture for 2023. And these are uh, those two adjustments are as follows. There was an SGF reappropriation of $3,302. That is unspent monies in 2022 that then roll forward into 2023. Additionally, there was um, a reappropriation totaling $4.4 million, an unspent state, state water plan fund in 2022. And again, that rolls forward then into 2023. The agency then submits a revised estimate of $61.9 million, including $11.2 million general fund in 2023. And as you can see above, uh, in the table, items one and two correspond to items one and two down below. And then additionally, items three and four will correspond with items three and four below. Included in the agency's estimate for 2023 is a supplemental for totaling $150,000 from the general fund for costs associated with the um, labs. That is to say the agency um, indicates that uh, expenditures for professional scientific supplies and other lab consumables are just going up, um, and they request $150,000 to pay for those additional expenditures. Item number four um, includes all other adjustments. That's $1.5 million. Now, this increase is um, primarily attributable to increasing estimates for for other assistance payments. More specifically, increases in other assistance are mostly attributable to a new federal grant received by the agency. The agency indicates that the purpose of the grant is to maintain and improve food and agricultural supply chain resiliency. And then the remaining balance of that includes some estimates for purchasing trucks along with other smaller adjustments. You will also notice that the agency includes um, an FTE adjustment of nine and they're all other adjustments. And this is related to enhancements that were approved during the last legislative session. Um, thus was funding for that, but not FTEs. And so the agency is requesting that FTE in order to fill those positions. Certainly. The agency indicates that those nine FTE included in their request, FTEs. 
Mr. Chair, I can continue on or I can stand for questions. Committee, do you have any questions so far? Go ahead, Luke. The governor concurs with the agency's 2023 revised estimate, and that includes the uh, supplemental for $150,000 from the general fund for those lab expenditures. Then moving on to page seven, we have the 2023 change from actual expenditures. The agency estimates revised expenditures of 6.9 million, including 11.2 million from the general fund in 2023. That's an increase of 15.6 million, all funding sources, including 2.2 million above the 2022 actual expenditures. The all funds increase is attributable to the agency reappropriating the $4.4 million from 22 into 23. The agency estimates that they will spend the entirety of that in the current year. So you will see that um, jump 2023 as when compared to 2022. Additionally, uh, the funds are also partially attributable for some increases in salary wage expenditures. If you all recall, the 2022 legislature did approve um, some additional positions for the agency and then also the statewide um, salary plan, 5%. So that's what makes up the changes from actual expenditures. Moving on into FY 2024, that is on page eight. Again, same with 2023. We will start with, at the top of the table here, is the agency's revised estimate for 2023. And then we will identify items that have changed from that request, and we call them out here in the table. Again, the numbers will correspond with uh, the rest of the numbers, the, the narratives or the blurbs throughout uh, this 2024 analysis. The agency requests 58 point. 3 million, including 12.7 million SGF for 2024. Uh, this is an all funds increase of 3.6 million. And while the all funds, while the all funds decrease below the 2023 revised estimate, uh, the SGF request for 2024 is an increase of 1.5 million. The SGF increase is attributable to agency enhancement requests. Uh, and then identified here below, are those that's two FTE for water appropriations and the dollar figure, two FTE uh, positions for water management staff, one FTE for water structure staff, one FTE for agricultural marketing, one for waste, or excuse me, water management grants, and the one for conservation grants. The agency also requests enhancements uh, totaling eight. 165758 from the Water Plan Fund for various agricultural programs and um, another $150,000 increase for the labs. As you recall, that's the same from FY 2023. They're carrying that request from 23 into 24. Then if we move forward into onto page nine, we'll talk a little bit about what each one of those enhancement requests are. Item number one is enhancement for water management. The agency requests 321713 from the SGF for 2024 to fund an additional two FTE positions above the agency's 23 revised estimate. The agency indicates that one position would ensure compliance with the Arkansas River, and another position would be dedicated to hydrology and geographic information systems, GIS, um, enhancing available public information and record sharing capabilities. The request would also include um, raises for existing staff. Item number two, enhancement for water management grant. The agency requests $100,000, all from the general fund, for 2024 and an additional one FTE position above the agency's 2023 revised estimate. The agency indicates that this position would manage incoming federal funds from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, and that would ensure that the agency can utilize um, all federal funding opportunities that would be available. For water appropriations, the agency requests 702015 all SGF for FY 2024 to fund two FTE positions above the agency's 2023 revised estimate. This request also includes funding to give existing staff salary increases. The agency indicates that the water appropriations program works to process water rights ap applications in a timely fashion. And currently, application processing time is taking close to one year. Agency indicates that this enhancement would help to reduce that processing time. Item number four is an enhancement for water structures. Agency requests 375971 
call from the general fund for 2024 to fund an additional one FTE position. Again, increase the salaries and wages for existing staff above the 2023 revised estimate. The agency indicates that this particular enhancement request would restore stream obstruction services. An enhancement from the Water Plan Fund for Water Resources Cost Share. Agency requests 65758 from the Water Plan Fund to improve public water supplies by addressing water quality or conserving water supplies. Item number six is the enhancement for the State Water Plan Fund Watershed Dam Construction. Agency requests $100,000 from the State Water Plan Fund to construct and restore watershed dams to reduce downstream damage from flooding events. This is a cost share program with local watershed districts. Item number seven, agency requests $100,000 from the Water Plan Fund to expand efforts to retire water rights near public water supplies or in highly over appropriated basins to reduce water use and extend the useful life of a high plains aquifer. Item number eight, is State Water Plan Fund for Ir Irrigation Technology. Agency requests $200,000. Again, this is a cost share opportunity that would allow farmers and ranchers to implement different soil mo moisture probes, bubbler nozzle packages, mobile drip irrigation systems, and telemetry for remote pivot operations and monitoring. Item number nine, enhancements from the State Water Plan Fund for Soil Health. Agency requests $200,000 from the State Water Plan Fund for education and outreach activities such as field days, workshops, and conferences to share information about soil health. The agency indicates this request would fund pilot projects to demonstrate opportunities with ecosystem services markets, cost share opportunities for innovation soil practices. Moving on then to page 10. Uh, number 10, enhancement from the water State Water Plan Fund for Stream Bank Stabilization. The agency requests $100,000 from the Water Plan Fund to construct stream bank stabilization structures to reduce sedimentation of downstream reservoirs. Agency indicates that the program is targeting John Redmond, Perry, and Tuttle Creek reservoirs. Item number 11, an enhancement for conservation grant. <clears throat> agency requests $100,000 from the general fund and one FTE position to hire a grant manager for the Division of Conservation. The agency's request, request would encompass salaries and wages, along with other um, ancillary costs such as travel. The agency indicates that the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act will make more funding available to states. However, the agency also indicates that it currently has little capacity to devote time and management towards those awards. The agency indicates further that hiring a grants manager would enable that capacity. Item number 12. Enhancement from the State Water Plan Fund for Crop and Livestock Research. The agency requests $100,000 from the State Water Plan Fund to continue research that is deemed necessary to ascertain and advance novel concepts related to water quality, quantity, and sustainability. Item 13 is for an enhancement for agricultural marketing. Agency requests $355,760 from the general fund and one FTE position to extend grant-funded to extend a grant-funded position and restore funding to support professional and contractual services. The agency indicates that this position is currently grant-funded, but the, this request would ensure that the position would be funded moving forward. The agency also requests funding to restore a 10% reduction that was applied to the program in FY 2022. Item number 14 were state water plan reappropriations. Um, if you remember, in 2023, the agency carried over $4.4 million from the State Water Plan Fund into 2023, and an adjustment was made um, to pull those dollars out for 2024 because the agency indicates that those monies will be spent in the current fiscal year. Item number 15 is the request for the labs. Again, same request as for 2023. That's $150,000 for uh, the agricultural labs relating to increased costs for lab consumables, scientific supplies, etc. All other adjustments made by the agency result in a net decrease of $2.1 million from all funds, including $572,656 from the general fund. The reduction is, is attributable to other assistance. The agency is estimating lower expenditures from fee and federal funds for various items considered to be other assistance in the agency's conservation program. 
The agency is also estimating lower expenditures for contractual services in 2024 um, when compared to 2023. The governor recommends expenditures totaling $57.4 million, including $12.2 million from the general fund for 2024. The governor's recommendations is an all-funds decrease of $970,758, including an SGF decrease of $505,000, below the agency's request. The recommendation does include eight enhancements, uh, totaling $2 million from all funding sources, which also includes one point six million from the general fund. And these are for water management, water appropriations, water structures, watershed dam construction, irrigation technology, and crop and, crop and livestock research. I will also note, too, that these are enhancement requests, meaning that the agency is wanting to expand um, efforts in these particular areas. The governor's recommendation, um, in addition to including some of those enhancements in her recommendation, uh, the governor also, we turn on over to page 11, is also recommending $100,000 for executive staff in the uh, agency central office. Item number 18, um, all other enhancement requests, and this is the items that the governor um, is not recommending. Uh, she deletes 870,758, including 405 from the general fund from the agency enhancement requests. And those items that were not recommended include water management grant, agricultural laboratories, conservation grants, water plan fund enhancements of 465,758, and the recommendation partially adopts the enhancement for agricultural marketing and deletes 250,000 general fund for that enhancement request. The recommendation instead includes 100,760,000, excuse me, 100,760 and one FTE position to enhance the agricultural marketing program. If we move over to page number 12, that's just the supplemental request. Um, that's the item for the laboratories there. Supplemental is for the current year, enhancements for the out year. If we flip over one more page to item 13, or excuse me, to page 13, I think this is a really good visualization for you all. And that is to say that the table up at the top is their 2024 enhancement request. The request is on the far left side. Uh, the SGF request is the next column. The all fund requests is next to that. And then the FTE is associated. That's the agency side. And then if we move over to the right side of the, of the table, we have what the governor is rec recommending. For example, the first one, you see water management. The agency has request 321, 713. And you can see that the governor also has that included, meaning that she has recommended it. Where you see blanks, that is the governor not recommending uh, this enhancement request. Mr. Chair, I can stand for questions or um, I continue to go through uh, these enhancement requests um, in some more detail if you would like. Any, any questions? Representative? Thank you, Mr. Chair. On page 12, um, you kind of, I, I, I think I know what hap is happening there, but would you just repeat that? Because we've got that in 23 supplemental just repeat what you said, please. Absolutely. Mr. Chair, for 2023, the agency included a supplemental request for $150,000 from the general fund for laboratory operational expenditures. The governor did include that in her recommendations. The agency in 2024 requested the same amount for the same purpose. However, the governor did not include that in her recommendations. That's where I got lost. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any more questions, committee? Go ahead, Luke. I would just note that the remainder of the items here are related to the agency's performance measures. So as you continue on, on starting on page 17, every um, all agency program measures, as they report them to us, are included in this packet, and it is broken down by program. Additionally, these are available online on the website. However, they are, uh, it's got all state agencies in there and that is nearly a thousand pages. So I don't think you'd want to print that, um, but you can certainly view those online as well. They're also available here for you on the um, budget analysis document. And then Mr. Chair, that would conclude my presentation unless there are any uh, other questions from members of the committee. 
Committee, any questions? Representative, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I need to actually get back to on on page ten. with uh, number 13 item, it, it talks about it's currently grant funded. <clears throat> How much is that grant right now? And when does the, the funding end? Uh, Mr. Chair, let me see if I have that information here. Mr. Chair, I don't have that information directly in front of me, but I can follow up on to, and to be clear, the representative's question was for uh, when does that funding expire? And uh, was there another question as well? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, would you, I, I know you went through this, but I'm kind of the slow kid in the class. Number 14, the 40, the 4.4 4 million I've seen that pop up a couple of times and it's a carryover, but it, why wasn't it spent or utilized in the previous year? Mr. Chair, uh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, agencies will do that from time to time. The agency does indicate that um, there were just not as many um, uh, applications or enough time to get those dollars out. Um, and those, and that would be mostly related to other assistance payments. So this is payments to um, farmers and ranchers. The agency does anticipate for those to pick up, and they do anticipate to be able to get those dollars out the door in FY 2023, and will not carry those forward into 2024. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, now on page eight, please. The, at the bottom with the agency request to the first beginning with water approaches, two FT, uh, FTEs, $702,000. Can you explain why so much money there? Yes, Mr. Chair, let me see. Uh, let me pull back over here to the enhancement request section. And this is for water appropriations. Um, is that the question? Yes. So the agency does indicate that the $702,000 would fund an additional two FTE positions. So that includes salaries, wages, in addition to French benefit costs. There are some additional costs there, group health insurance, social security, et cetera. Um, in addition to that, it also provides salary enhancements for other existing staff within that particular program. So that's where that comes from. Um, yeah, so that's where those additional costs come from. How many persons are currently in that position? Mr. Chair, I do not have that information right in front of me, but I will follow up um, on the water um, appropriations uh, to identify uh, how many are currently in that division. And, and that would be my question, actually, for all of these additional requests of persons. And then, of course, that's eight additional positions and do you know off the top of your your mind are there any vacancies already in these in, in, this, in these positions mr chair i do have information uh, for the representative regarding uh vacancies the agency um currently indicates that there are 33 vacancies across the entire agency however that's not broken down i, I don't have the breakdown i've got 33 across the agency indicates 33 across the entire agency but not for these particular enhancement requests uh and how many individuals that would affect but i can track that down thank you mr chair thank you mr chair uh, the previous uh, representative asked most of my questions, but one of my had was on the water appropriations too on the employees. Uh, I don't know that you can answer this, but when I was reading through this, it says, you know, for water rights applications and permitting, 
I thought we were cutting down on those. So I think we'd be reducing the numbers instead of adding to them because we're trying to cut down on permits until we get the water level straightened out. And I don't think you could probably answer that, but maybe somebody could answer me that later. It's on number th page nine, number two, or number three. And so maybe maybe one of them can answer that to me later so I can explain that because I get complaints from people that <laughs> at home. All I want some answers to give to them. So thank you. And thanks for the previous questions. Ready? Any other questions? Luke? Oh, Representative? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Luke, for this. Can you tell me the percentage of the salary increases that, or do they vary, or is that a standard percentage? Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, I do not have the uh, what that salary increase would be across the board. Um, I don't know if it's across the board or if it'd be more targeted for uh, whatnot, but I can track that down. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Luke, I, I, on behalf of the committee, I do want to tell you thank you for breaking this down for us and being very precise and, and being articulate. So I do appreciate your patience with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative. And then, Mr. Chair, that would conclude my presentation. I would note, too, that Secretary Beam is here to address the committee as well. Great job, Luke. So uh, our next uh, is Secretary Mike Beam. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, we have provided uh, several documents to you. I have uh, a two, two long two page uh, to work off of. I'm not going to go through all of that. Uh, if, with your permission, here in a few minutes, I'd like to have uh, our CFO, Kellen Leaps, help walk you through some of this. We've also, our staff's also put together a very detailed uh, analysis that goes into depth on all of these programs because uh, as you'll see, we have a whole array of programs that uh, work with Kansans on a daily basis. If you think about pesticide and fertilizer and water and weights and measures, which includes fuel pumps, um, food safety, which includes restaurants. Uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of different programs. So we broke that out and provided more detail uh, in this document. I think she'll give you some highlights of that. Uh, on the prepared document uh, that I provided, I, there's two uh, graphs, kind of high level. The first one is the funding sources for the agency, um, both uh, for the actuals uh, for FY23 and the governor's recommendation for FY24. So you can see that at the bottom of my first page. And then this, on the top of the second is the breakout of where those uh, funds are budgeted, some actuals, and then, of course, into the future on budgeting. So uh, I might respond to a couple of the questions uh, that, that uh, Representative Jacobs and I think others. Um, so on the one enhancement for the 100000 for the grant manager, that is a USDA grant of approximately $2.5 million dollars that ends in 2024. That grant is, we have a person that we were able to pull some from, some funds from that grant to administer, but it's essentially money that will go out to local producers, uh, disadvantaged producers who want to sell uh, basically fruits, vegetables, uh, meat, and sell the they'll basically sell them to food banks. The food banks will use the money from this program. Then that food is to be distributed to socially disadvantaged people all across the state of Kansas. So that grant ends. Uh, we anticipate, we have a chance to apply for another one here this spring that would roll over into the future. And we've also found that this person, uh, it works well for them to be assigned three other grants that we have right now that we get from USDA. One's an organic food grant um, or two others and another uh, kind of a local food grant. And so uh, we believe that with 
some known stability of state general funds for that position, we can continue to pull those grant funds down. Uh, the state water plan, the rollover, part of the problem is uh, this money goes to local conservation districts and they have entered into contracts with farmers to do some of this work. And it's just this whole supply chain availability of, of construction. It's difficult a lot of times to get the equipment, get the, the contractor scheduled, uh, and then they may get the bid and find out, oh, this is way more. This is inflated up. Turn back the money, then they go to another person. So there's a delay in getting that money out. But because of previously appropriated money and if the rollover is available the, with contracts they have in queue now, that some of that will be uh, teed up in, in the following year. But it's just difficult sometimes in the 12 months to get those dollars out when you have unexpected increases in costs that the landowner would incur and, uh, and availability of contractors. Um, and also with us today is, is the uh, our representatives of the Division of Water Resources. Uh, we asked them to come along because water is a pretty big part of our agency, and I know there'll be a lot of questions. I would just tell you that uh, it might surprise you, uh, but we get an ab we're getting an abnormal number of applications. And uh, as Lane has told me, they're not the usual applications. There may be a lot of them in, in the eastern part of the state where somebody's looking at maybe building a dam and, and trying to do some irrigation. All those take review. And, and then plus we have, because of the drought year and the interest in the multi-year flex accounts, if you've over-pumped, we had, I think, at least 600 of those applications come in you know, at the end of the year. So we're, we're a year away from getting our permits processed. And the difficulty we've had, the legislature last year gave us some funding uh, positions. We just can't hire the people. We've had position op positions open for a year and the salary is just not competitive enough to bring people in. So a lot of that 702,000 is to enhance those salaries for engineers and, and others. And, and we're trying to stay consistent with the salary level of engineers and environmental associates with KDOT and KDHE, We're trying to work together on getting somewhat of a more competitive pay range. Um, but if you like, if it's okay, I'd like uh, Kellen, I can respond to questions now or I can let Kellen. Uh, yes, you, sure. Would, you, would it bother you if, if we took questions as you go through or do you want to do your whole? No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So any questions? Your, your, your first representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I apologize. Were, were you addressing line item or, or on page 10, number 13, when you first came up? I'm... Uh, yes. And, and, and if I may, on page 9, please. Number two, where it talks about available federal funding opportunities, where it adds a hundred thousand dollars and another FTE, FTE. What are those available federal fundings, and how long is that application process? Well, the one that comes to mind is the infrastructure grants that are going to be available, but you might note that one was not uh, approved by the governor, so we're we're supportive of the governor's budget. Thank you. Representative Blue. Um, good morning, Mr. Morning. Before I consider uh, who goes to with this, if you may, uh, before I vote on your budget, would you consider answering five questions for me? I sure <laughs> attempt to, yes. Uh, about the small animal advisory board, there are 10 positions. Number seven says there's a member, the, the member shall be a private person with no link to the industry. Many large and small animal producers have lots of questions about this person selected by your, you and Governor Kelly. She seems to have ties to extreme animal rights groups. Can you explain? Uh, we have a member of the advisory committee that we're, we have recently noted that may or may not meet the qualifications of that requirement. So 
that is uh, under consideration right now. This has gone on for a couple of years now. Uh, it's my understanding that the person in question uh, has only recently done taken employment that may have been in conflict with that. Well, when you instated her, we had questions about her. And as she sat down, and well, I was there in Manhattan, she sent her animal, animal rights cup right in front of us that had the initials of the group. I mean, it was pretty obvious. That was after she was appointed. That, that was as you seated her. Well, I, you know, the, the governor's office makes those appointments. They do the vetting. We have some input. I think she was appointed. Before she came to the meeting, she was appointed, but you were there that you were the one that introduced her and seated her. OK, let's go to the next one. Um, can you explain why the candidate for the breeder position in the small animal um, division has not been seated by Governor Kelly? We've had a candidate there and she's been waiting for a year and there has been no action. And we've asked and asked and asked, why hasn't she been seated? I asked two last week. They're, they are way behind on appointments. Uh, I was told that they were going to re they've reached out a couple times at Mr. So I was told that that was going to be followed up since our meeting Friday. So I don't, I would say when you had look at our pet animal advisory committee, animal health board, board of ag, those are the ones that we have appointments made all the other agencies. Um, they're behind. And that's not unusual. I've worked with administration after administration. They have thousands and thousands of appointments to make, and they can never be on time. Well, I have a governor with a, a supper with the governor Tuesday night. Could I ask her? You think that would be appropriate? I would encourage you, yes. I, I would hope you would set up a, like a five-minute meeting so I could ask her, and then it wouldn't take very long. I'd be very polite. We might be able to have that. We might be able to have it resolved before that. But we'll see. Are you are you familiar with Colorado's Proposition 16 that every livestock producer in Kansas should read that it would be a total loss to the whole state? Are you familiar with that proposition? Uh, somewhat. Yeah, I've I think heard as the Secretary of Agriculture, you should be very, very familiar with that. That's the one where if you AI a cow, that's rape. And if you uh, preg checker, that's bestiality. And it goes on and on and on. And all of our veterinarians, if they continued practicing like they are today, would be put in jail. And it, I'm not making this up. It's in the proposition. Yeah, and and it's, it's been there for a long time. And I have never heard it addressed by you. Well, my Ag reaction is I don't see it how that would ever have a chance in this we session. didn't th they didn't think it would colorado either well was it by the um by referendum or by legislature because colorado i think has an issue in referendum they have to get so many votes uh, to put it on and the governor has said that if he wanted to he could get that many votes in downtown denver in an afternoon that's not gonna i can just tell you it's not gonna pass in kansas do you know what this is i'm sorry do you know what this is no let me read it to you. Um, no contact notice. And it has my name on it and Inspector Mark Olson. And I understand he's been promoted now. An animal facility inspector program attempted to conduct an inspection on your facility. Your premise was not made available within 30 minutes of the inspector's arrival. Therefore, you must pay a new a 200 no contact fee. Uh, an official invoice will be mailed to you with a certified letter sent to you through the US, USPS if your hours of availability have changed on them. This is, says that we cannot be away from our kennel over a half hour, 24-7, 365 days a week. Do you know what we call that? It's called the Kansas Gestapo Law. That's what this is. It is illegal for my wife and I. Now, do you know where I was when I got this? I was giving blood. I was donating blood. When I came home and saw this, I, oh, I have a note here that says I have to be happy. Okay, oh, sorry. Oh, when, I, when I came home and saw this, I was very, very upset and nobody would help me. I told you I'd never pay it. And I had to pay it because I cannot send puppies outside of the state unless they're vet inspected and that paper immediately goes to you. So you, Do you, you know- You right. used a key term and, and that is in the statute. That is a law. That 30 minutes is in the law. Yeah, we can't understand how that ever got through, if it got through. We weren't watching for that. I mean. Well, you're good. So what I suggest, if you'll take the time and you have some time after this meeting, 
Could you give him 10 or 15 minutes? Absolutely. Would that be good for you? I just have one more thing to say. Yes, that'd be fine. I'd be great. This is short. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to state so everybody can hear that we can't have a designated person when we're gone. That's how you get away with it. But you just said you can't find employees. Can you imagine how we could find somebody to come out for a half hour? I don't know anybody in the state of Kansas is just under this law but us. It is illegal for my wife and I to go grocery shopping, to go to any event, to go to a wedding. We cannot legally go to church together because we live 10 miles from church. And it certainly takes more than a half hour to go to church. Do you understand where I'm coming from? I do understand. Well, that's why I wanted you to know before I voted for this budget. I waited two long years to get a chance to talk to you again. I know the last time we talked, we didn't leave in very friendly terms. So I hope we can do better today. But something definitely has to be done with this. This is your taxpayers. We're the ones that pay your taxes. We're not a shelter. Okay, guys. I agree with we, we need to get it aired, and you two can, and I can I can referee if you need it. <laughs> uh, but it needs to be, it is an issue that, that, that it, it is tough for people like he's, he's saying to you, and, uh, and I know you've got statutes you've got to live with, but s somehow if one of you can tell me what we can do to make it better, I'll be glad to, to make, do all I can to, to make that work for both the agency and the, the breeders. So that's the best I can tell you at the moment. So we have, who had a question? Uh, thank you, Secretary Beam. Yes. Following that, um, on uh, page nine, the enhancement that we talked about for the water management grant and talked about, um, I just wanted to make sure I understood Two. it would help yeah, help disadvantage growers, you know, for like food banks, organic and local, you know, food. I know that's a huge issue in a lot of areas, you know, just access to fresh fruits and vegetables. So is that, would that help like both in the rural and urban areas, somebody to, for the management of that grant? Maybe I have the wrong grant. 11. I think if you go to uh, number 11 on page 10. Oh, am I echoing you again? I'm sorry. Well, maybe not. Maybe just a second. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Number 13. Number 13 on page 10. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yes, that's... And that, that's the one that wasn't included in the governor's recommendation? Was. Well, part of it was. Part of it was. $100 okay. was included in the governor's budget. 100000 <laughs> I have a hundred. I was thinking, I don't think a hundred dollars would go very far, but <laughs> I have a hundred K in my notes. So, <laughs> okay. And so is that what that grant would do or that person would do? It would help like bank bring in additional grants for that purpose, for that purpose and both in urban and rural areas. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. That's usually the requirements of the grants as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Brett? Ready? We might continue it. Oh, you got a question. Go ahead. Uh, what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, on page, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. On page 10, number 10, uh, for the stream bank stabilization, I just wonder what we're going to be able to do with the $100,000 at Tuttle, Perry, Redmond, and wherever. I mean, that's not very much money. So that is an enhancement on existing monies from the state water plan that go for that purpose. So it's already budgeted and we're There adding. is money there. We requested an additional 100000 Okay, thank you so was much. was not uh, that, adhered to. That's not, be, because that enhancement was not brought forward, does not mean there's nothing there. There's still funding there, and we can get that exact number. But we talk about it from time to time. and. But and that's just, on the smaller structures upstream of those big reservoirs. Okay. All right, thank you. I might continue if you'd like. Okay, if it's all right, I would like uh, Kellen to maybe hit some highlights as well. Uh, and then both of us or all of us are available for follow up questions, if, if that's okay with you. All right, with me. Okay, Kellen.
Well, good morning, Chairman Kirshen and members of the committee. I am Kellen Leach, and I'm honored to serve as the CFO of the Kansas Department of Agriculture. I'm just going to hit a couple of high-level overview pieces because you've, you've already heard a lot of information this morning from Luke and from the Secretary. Before you, you should have been provided a fairly lengthy 30-page document, as well as the information from KLRD. And so based upon some of the questions that have come out this morning, I'm just going to try and point out a couple of those in some of the programs and then cede the rest of the time this morning for questions. So if you will turn with me to page four in the KDA document that has the, the pictures, yes, Representative Mosher, the, the, the document that's blue. If you will turn with me to page four that says Kansas Department of Agriculture Agency Overview at the top of it. I just want to share that KDA has 345 employees at the moment. We've had a little bit of conversation about, about open positions and authorized positions and things of that nature. We do have 345 employees across 15 different programs within KDA. Currently, we do have 33 open positions. I have a feeling that question might be coming, so I'll just rip the Band-Aid off right now. But we do have 33 open positions across those, the wide variety of programs. And to the left there, I will note that's our fund analysis for last fiscal year. So those are our, our actuals for all of last fiscal year. And you will see that carryover in the state water plan funds. We've already had some conversation about carryover. Luke did a very nice job with that, that in the Division of Conservation and the Division of Water Resources, we had some carryover. So we're rolling that in to adjusted fiscal year 23. We have great plans and opportunities to spend that hopefully as supply chain issues and contractor issues we, as we take care of those working with the local conservation districts and, and great partners to get those spent out. And so those won't necessarily roll forward again to fiscal year 24, but just wanted to point that out. We then have our budget figures with multiple years of actuals to look at, and then our program expenditures at the bottom of the page. I will note that our salary is about 45% of the agency. We are a very mean and lean agency with only about 45% of our agency going to salary. And then we have about 20% of the agency going to professional services. And so that's just a KDA in a nutshell at a high level overview. And then the first program that I wanna hit for you, we'll start on the next page on page five. I believe a representative Carlin had a couple questions about the lab. We did have a, a supplemental in fiscal year 23 in the amount of $150,000. And that is to cover utilities, rising costs for scientific supplies and different things of that nature. And that Ag Lab really does impressive analytical services for a wide variety of our agribusiness services division. And so we did receive $150,000 supplemental. However, we did not receive $150,000 enhancement request in fiscal year 24. So that's why you were seeing the numbers there that you did, Representative Carlin. The next program I will just point out a couple things on will be on page 11, which will be in the Division of Conservation. That will be the program that you will see the bulk of our carryover funds for State Water Plan which I, I touched on just a moment ago. But if you want to see those carryover funds in their specific programs, whether that's stream bank stabilization or water resources cost share, what, whatever that is, on the right side of that, of that table there, you can see the carryover we had last fiscal year that we're rolling into this year. So I think that's a good way to look at it there and see what we're rolling into this year and so that we are utilizing it to the best of our ability and spending it in, in this fiscal year when we know we can get it on the ground and, and work with our partners to do that. So that's a, a good one. And then I'll spend the bulk of my time here maybe asking some for some help from my friends in the back for the Division of Water Resources. We had quite a few questions about water appropriation, water management services, and water structures. So if you'll kind of turn it the, in the back of your package to pages 25 through 30, wherever you kind of land there, that will put you in the, the water programs. 
But that's where a bulk of our enhancement funding for fiscal year 24 is going. It's about $1.4 million. And there were some questions about how many open positions, whether the, the salary increases are, whether there's a percentage or how that works. In water appropriations right now, those salary increases would go to support roughly 40 plus positions. That program is a very uh, a wide program that supports people in, in the water industry across the entire state. We have field offices in Stafford, Stockton, Garden City, Parsons, Topeka, and then in our headquarters in Manhattan. So we, those salary increases are, are really important as we support the, the, the water users in, in and all of the agricultural producers in the state of Kansas. And so I can't say it's a, a specific percentage for anyone because those are for administrative, technical professions, engineers, assistant water commissioners. It's a whole breadth of, of professions, but that it is a, a good chunk of people in that program. And that there are, once again, those increases are bringing people up because we are really trying to get not only competitive, but parity with other state agencies, as the secretary said, with KDHE, with KDOT, we're finding that it's hard to re recruit and retain people into those positions unless you're providing them an adequate and compensatory salary. So that's what some of those, uh, the new positions and the additional funding is for as well. So that's what you'll see in the, the water appropriations program. So, um, I think that's about all of my highlights I have at this time. I would be more than happy to stand for questions at the appropriate time. And I appreciate the time and the opportunities to stand before you this morning. You're doing a great job. And I want to save this for your group, for your budget, the way you lay it out, the way it is to read. Uh, uh, you're kind of the Chick-fil-A of budgets. You, uh, you might... <laughs> You, you, you might want to find the other agencies and just have a little schooling for them, but this is easy to read and it's, uh, it's easy to follow. So thank you. Yeah. Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just would like to make a comment that I have been through the new lab over in Manhattan and it is absolutely amazing the work that they do there. And so I will definitely be in favor of, um, recontracting your ask for this next fiscal year. Thank you. Representative Curtis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so my question is, um, in sorry, I'm trying to minimize my echo. Um, my question is cybersecurity needs. Do you feel like your agency is meeting your cybersecurity needs? That is a great question. I feel that we are, it is always at the forefront of our mind, and we are continually striving to, to replace and upgrade and update things. I feel that we, we might be a, a little bit better than some because we're not necessarily connected to some of the other outside parties as, as some of other um, state agencies are that interplay with a lot of different pieces. But I, I think that we, we participate in the, the, the Kansas Information Security Office trainings and we always ensure that our employees are abreast and our CIO and our IT folks certainly do that. But I think it's something that we always need to keep front of mind and something that I think we would always be welcome to, to participate in a conversation on and something that we, we need to keep pushing to the forefront. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll have another um, cybersecurity summit um, because that was real informative and not only, um, you know, for us internally, you know, as our government functions and as we connect to outside, but also those that we serve because I think um, technology and definitely cybersecurity will continue to be a concern. And I would imagine in agriculture that that would be something. So just something that we all need to be conscious of and have front of mind. So thank you for your response. Appreciate it. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would 
like to echo the chair's compliments on how you guys structured this. This is very premium. Thank you. Did I see something and maybe I, would you help me? Did I see something where you guys were requesting more vehicles in, in this budget? We budgeted for vehicles, but we did not put in an additional request for any additional vehicles. That's my question at the moment. Thank you, sir. Representative Garber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple questions. One's a real quick one. Um, on your salaries, on all of your uh, nice, beautiful things you gave us, I appreciate that. Does that include the benefits, health benefits and all that? Is that all part of that salary? That would be the all-in salary. Okay. All right. Yes, Thank sir. You. The other question I have, you mentioned you had 33 unfilled positions. Okay. If by some miracle next week you filled all 33 of those, is that money there? For them or has it been spent on something else or that's that's a great question and those those are 33 budgeted positions and that those savings accrue to the to the to the programs in which they were budgeted for and so we do or i i feel that we do an incredibly good job within our agency in tracking the actuals for the programs and so that that the savings goes towards that program within the fund in which it was budgeted. And then we have conversations with those program managers to ensure that they're continually looking at that to ensure that it is a conversation on whether that it is spent on something appropriate within their budget authority, but then ensuring they have those funds that they're filling those positions in a timely fashion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of my questions while I'm looking at this, you know, last year when you were here, we, we were still short of places for uh, to get your meat processed. You know, guys that had trying to raise their the beef to kind of time to where they hit a locker plant. So, is that easing up at all, or, or are you are they still trying to get more places to uh, handle that? You know, I think I'll phone a friend here. So, in the past year, we've had uh, an increase. A slight increase in the number of the local meat processing plants, I think one to three. Uh, what's important to note is because of the, the, the SPARC grants, that, the food grants that we rolled out in 2020, late 2020, early 21, many of those were able to expand. That was the, the, the hurdle was a cooling area and the, the equipment. So they've, re, they've amped up their capacity. Uh, our meat inspector, we've, had, we've got more meat inspectors now because in many cases they have to be there or that business can't operate that day. Uh, so we hear that there's a few more that are still considering uh, building new smaller local facilities. I, I would say though that uh, I know there was a big, uh, a big shortage of availability during uh, deer season a couple years ago because these plants were so overwhelmed with traditional livestock that some of them quit taking, you know, the game uh, during the hunting season. So uh, the capacity has increased. Uh, we think more will be increased, um, but there's always a, there's still a line or a waiting list in many of these for that custom operation of of, a, of an animal from a farm. This is just uh, maybe on a somewhat personal level, but. It would be nice to know, as as the year gets along, if you have a list of um, processors that would take deer, so we could get you know shoot out a JPEG on face on our f social media. So um, I think we did that a couple of years ago. It's probably t it's time for us to update that and and work on that, and we will. One more question: Do you all? ones who are the licensing licensing people for the county weed weed control people you know like shawnee county has a weed department and most counties do do they answer to you um they primarily answer to the county commissioners who hire them but they are to follow the guidelines of the state law and our regulations 
but we don't hire, um, and the legislature has set certain pretty minimal criteria that the uh, that they have to meet or should meet, but they are a county employee. They just follow. They're supposed to follow your standards, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Speak, bringing that up, got a question. <clears throat> so the counties have a weed, noxious weed department, right? Is that funded through the state or through the state? It's just given to the county? It's all local. We, the state doesn't provide any money. Okay, so if the county decides to close their weed department up, they can take that money and use it for something else on the roads? Because we're running into that in a couple in a county that I represent. Yeah, I don't have to look at the statute. I don't know if the statute requires Okay, that's what I was do it. We should look at that. But okay, uh, could you find that out for me, sure. please? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Bloom. Uh, Secretary Beam, uh, once a new uh, plant processing plant comes online, how long does it take you to get it inspected so they can get running? Oh, I, I think they're there less than a day, and then process the paperwork. So we try. Have we, you had any new plants lately? Or not? Um, I'd have to look. Not very many new ones, complete new ones. We've had several expansions. Um, we try to go, we encourage them to, to have some con consultation with us as they're finishing or building, then it goes a lot faster. So they know what the, the USDA standards are. Secretary Beam. Yes. Uh, with the legislative research handout on page five. Here. Yes, sir. Where it talks about that in the paragraph, the agency estimate, and it would be the second sentence, the majority of the increases attributed or attributable <laughs> to a new federal grant for local food purchase program 1.2 million and farm ranch stress assistance. Could you ex maybe expound on what is the farm and ranch stress assistance program, please? Sure. Um, if I may, um, Deputy Secretary Olson is, is spearheaded this program, and um, I would rather, if it's okay, have her respond. Hi, I'm Kelsey Olson, Deputy Secretary of the Department of Ag. Um, regarding the farm and ranch stress assistance, that is a federal grant that we that the agency has been awarded. Um, it came out in 2021, and, or excuse me, in 2020. And with that, we have been able to promote the farm and ranch stress, uh, the kansasstress.org website, which is a website set up to house um stress resources that might anything related from mental health awareness to financial assistance to, um, you know, how to, you know, if you're struggling to pay for your local, your food, um, there's a wide vast resources that are existing in the state that we pulled together and targeted towards the farming and ranching community. Um, the, we received additional funds, $156,000 um, to expand that and, uh, the work that we were already doing, we did a lot of social media campaign, and currently we are focused on print advertisements. So check your local newspapers and farm publications for some uh, advertisements in there to promote that website. Uh, Mike, last year we, we kind of passed a bill out for rural housing, and a lot of that was kind of I thought earmarked towards the dairy industry out around Dodge City. Are the are the is the dairy industry growing and is it in good health here in Kansas? The dairy industry is growing. Uh, milk uh, production continues to inch up. Uh, the number of dairy farms are lessening, but the milk production continues to grow. And because of the new uh, cheese plant being built in Dodge City. Uh, there will be considerable expansion in dairy cow numbers. Uh, some of those existing farms will expand, uh, anticipate maybe one or two new farms. Uh, and that's that's an issue is labor. And then, of course, the housing for those in those rural communities. Is, it's 
housing is a challenge anywhere, but you can only imagine the rural communities trying to get homes for people that workers uh, is a big challenge. So I know that was imp- one of the impetuses for that that program, grant program, is to help those rural areas and a lot of interest in that Ford, Finney, that southwest area particularly. I'm constantly getting calls from people, especially on the east side of the state, on agritourism. And it seems to be some some county appraisers and some think that uh, if you if, if you do something that's ag related, they want to tax you as commercial. Are are you working with uh, the ag the ag people the the ag people here with uh, uh, tourism? So, you know, we did participate in a, in a meeting uh, this fall with Department of Revenue and Commerce, who has the agritourism um, program, and you know, talked through it. it. It's a little bit complex because it's it's partially local zoning issues as well, and if that drives uh, the taxation as well. So uh, it's on a, kind of on a case by case basis, but it, it, I know it's a struggle and a challenge for some of those that are, are trying to, to do that and keep the ag valuation on the land. And you, what I've noticed is across the state, there are a lot of beef producers tr- basically just, uh, moving, kicking it up a notch and selling it like, uh, from farm to table or you sell it right from the farm. That, is that kind of increasing quite a bit? Um, I don't know if, if it's a significant number, but there's a lot of creative ways, especially with the next generation. They're, they're trying to break another generation back. And some of them see it as an opportunity to market direct. And it may be, you know, that special uh, uh, flair where you can come to the ranch and enjoy the food and the atmosphere. But uh, I You'll see a lot of that creativity as we try to bring these next generations back in an industry that's very, very, uh, takes a lot of capital. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And since kind of asking the question, maybe I need to get with you a little later too. Uh, my granddaughter's majoring in ag communications at K-State. She said they had a deal, a professor that showed them a video that the biggest cause of human trafficking is chicken farms in the state of Kansas and Iowa. Um, and they, she was kind of upset about that because it put a negative, it was the consequences of negative part, uh, communications. Do you know anything about that? I don't. Um, do we have chicken? Do we have some chicken farms? We here? have some, but nothing to the extent that other states have. Okay. I'd we like to visit with you on that later. Operations, or yeah, one of somebody talk about what they were showing the kids in agriculture. Thank you. Last call. Any questions? So Mike, your team has done a great job. And, uh, if unless, unless, unless the water people would like to say something. I'm not. Well, you're, you're lucky, Representative. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm proud of them. They, they put, do a lot of work putting this together. And, um, make, I, have, I, have been I was that close, a that close to a getaway. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, uh, not. Well, I don't even know whether this is the proper place or time, but you know, when we have people in the room that know the answers, maybe we'd have to ask questions. I haven't really studied water spending, so it's not about that, but um, I would like to ask Earl or someone. If it's, it might be, I'm, I'm, just I'm guessing it might be most appropriate for Chief Engineer Earl those to respond. Okay. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Oh. <laughs> you can come back. Um, I, I appreciate having the opportunity to just mention something to you. Um, you know, I'm really proud of, of this administration for paying down debt. And I, I think it's been a real boost to Kansas to clean up our debt. 
But I do have a question about pay, the governor's recommendation to pay down these other storage debts. And um, I understand that interest rate is very low on those. Yeah, the interest, and, and I'm have to go back on memory again, Earl Lewis, uh, Chief Engineer with the Department of Division of Resources. Um, that's really handled through the Kansas Water Office. I you might get a chance to, to hear from Of course, I spent many years there, so I've got a little bit of yeah. background there. Um, and I'm trying to remember the exact numbers, uh, but the, the governor's recommendation is to pay off the remaining debt at Milford and Perry. Um, one of those interest rates is, is if I remember right, like 2.64%. The other one is around 3.1%, 3.2%. Um, so they, they were, I think, two, the two lowest interest rate uh, reservoirs that remained as you were talking about this last year. So when we paid last year, they were at the bottom of the list. Yeah. Um, my, my question is, I remember, and I just don't know if you're the right folks to ask, but um, we had um, information a couple of years ago that there were several communities that were facing real serious water issues. And I'm wondering if we've been able to help them and if we have money that maybe we should be looking at doing that. Um, their water quality is so low. Um, so that's, I think that's always going to be a, a challenge for us as a state, uh, especially when we've got the smaller communities. Uh, you know, think about the ones that are less than 500 people. Uh, typically they have, you know, those are typically lower income and don't have the ability to pay uh, higher rates for their water. And a lot of the federal programs that subsidize the state revolving loan, loan programs, and again, this is speaking uh, KDHA can give you more detail on this than I can, uh, but but they those programs don't necessarily fit those really small communities, and so we have a an issue there of of trying to make sure that we have some resources available to to address those um, small rural communities needs when we don't necessarily have the the funding and the programs that match up very well. Do you know if we have resources available at this time? to assist them, or is that something we need to consider? Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's one of the on. things that's under consideration. Okay. Um, I think there are, are, are some resources, but it's really pretty limited compared to the need. Okay, well, just put that in your pipe and smoke it and see what you can come <laughs> up with. Well, thank, right, you, thank you, Mr. You. Chair. Appreciate that. <laughs> that may be your your deal for the, your weekend, I guess. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, before we adjourn Monday, we do we're going to be doing uh, commerce and ag if we have time, and uh, have a safe weekend and enjoy the good weather. We're adjourned. Monday.